Captain Forest here. In today's video, I'm going to be going over both these combatants to see who would win, more often not, in a crossfire situation. Gojo from Jujutsu Kaisen versus Kakashi from Naruto. If you guys are new to my channel, please leave a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe for further content. Now, I'm going to go ahead, start off Gojo, talk about some of the stuff that he brings to the table, and I will also move on, talk about Kakashi, and then give my thoughts on who I think wins more often than not in a crossverse situation. Starting off with attack potency, let's talk about some feats for Gojo. In the early encounter against Jogo, Gojo demonstrates the gap between each other as Gojo is able to blitz and beat up Jogo. Then he's able to use his curse technique red, generate a small red orb and blast it at Jogo, sending him flying. This very same Jogo created an iron mountain, which was calc around the mountain to large mountain level plus ranges. We all like a little bit of consistency. Gojo is above the likes of Dagon, who created his own tropical island, which was calc around the mountain level ranges too. So right off the bat, in terms of AP, Gojo is raging from mountain to large mountain level. There's also finite feats, you can take it down. There's like a city level calc, I believe, but easily ranging from those levels. We can actually get Gojo higher, folks. Gojo would also scale above Yuki. Yuki herself was able to create a black hole which was going to destroy the world. This feat was calc around the large planetary ranges of attack potency. The reason why Gojo would scale to this is due to the statement and hierarchy of Gojo and Sukuna being stated and shown to be the strongest sorcerers in their respective eras. Now moving on to speed, there is a feat where Gojo is able to dodge an explosion from a bunch of cursed spirits. Now there are some ranges for this, as there is the anime and manga interpretations. I'll include both ranges for the sake of this video. So the feat in the manga was calced around the Mach 121, aka massively hypersonic, and the anime it was calced around Mach 1979, aka massively hypersonic plus. There is another calc where Hakari was able to dodge lightning, which was calced around the Mach 547 as a low end, and the higher end was calced around Mach 945, aka massively hypersonic, very close to massively hypersonic close as well. So Gojo would also scale to this and pretty much just be above it outright due to his own feet being just way more impressive than this. All right, that's gonna conclude stats. I'm gonna move over, talk about Gojo's bread and butter, talk about his curse technique, domain expansion, and any other miscellaneous things in this disposal. Now, in order to truly understand these concepts, I've got to break down a very important aspect in JJK called cursed energy. Cursed energy is a form of negative energy that flows within people and is supplied by negative emotions. These energies attract and also bring curses into existence. Notable places where curses thrive are places such as busy crowded areas and gatherings, schools and hospitals. The components of what manifests cursed energy can be emotions such as pain, humiliation, regret, depression, negative thoughts, bad memories, love, etc. Jujutsu sorcerers are taught how to control their emotions when using cursed energy. They do this so that they don't waste cursed energy. Todo explains to Yuji about cursed energy. Cursed energy flows from the stomach to the chest, shoulders, and then arms and fist. It depends on how you flow the cursed energy. In this case, Todo is critiquing Yuji's divergent fist, noting that he needs to instead flow the energy simultaneously with his raw attacks instead of just hitting afterwards, as the delayed technique is garbage against more powerful opponents and more so works effectively against average level Jujutsu sorcerers. This leads me to talk about another thing called Cursed Technique. In early chapters of JJK, Gojo explains the difference between Cursed Energy and Cursed Technique. Cursed Energy is like electricity. It's difficult to use properly on its own, but by applying it with cursed technique, in this example of electronics, like a hairdryer using electricity, you can project cursed energy with more control, precision, and skill. More skilled and experienced Jujutsu sorcerers can use cursed energy more efficiently, such as applying it to their own entire body to form a barrier to protect from attacks. Nanami, who was also a skilled sorcerer in his own right, is able to apply cursed energy to his soul in order to protect himself from Mahito's soul transfiguration or to amplify their physical attacks by reinforcing their fists limbs with cursed energy. People's use of cursed energy and cursed techniques are different and unique to oneself, but in Gojo's case, he has something special. Gojo possesses the six eyes, which is an innate gift rarely inherited within the Gojo clan. There are non-standard phenomenon in Jujutsu, which grants the user extraordinary perception, allowing them to see 
the flow of cursed energy and read cursed techniques. It also allows for precise control over cursed energy which is indispensable for utilizing his limitless. Due to the six eyes, Gojo almost never runs out of cursed energy when he performs his cursed techniques, which also leads me to talk about his other cursed techniques. I'll start off with one that is most feared by everyone, Infinity. Gojo's cursed technique in simple terms is an infinite barrier where any attack that moves at a finite distance will never reach him. The barrier will create a space so that even if you try to physically touch him, you cannot. All attacks come to an abrupt halt. The author himself had to hire mathematicians in order to explain to the readers how infinity works due to its complexity. In order to even reach Gojo, you'd have to travel at higher infinities of speed or higher in order to reach Gojo. Otherwise, you will never touch him and you'll be halted by his barrier every time. Gojo's barrier operates automatically instead of manually and he can keep the barrier active at all times. He shows later on that it's constantly active when he's out and about and also keeps it on him when his allies are around. He can also distinguish a threat based on the mass, speed and shape when the barrier interacts with attacks or objects, giving Gojo awareness of the type of attack he's dealing with. Another extension of Gojo's curse technique called Red, a character named Miguel explains Red as the property of Limitless, which is Gojo's ability to manipulate curse energy and destroy things down on an atomic level with it by manipulating space-time. Curse technique LARPs blue is achieved when the limitless user greatly amplifies the amount of curse energy poured into this technique. This brings the concept of negative numbers and negative distance into reality, forcing real space to compensate and fill in the area by drawing everything towards the impossibility. This generates a strong force of attraction similar to a powerful magnet. By flowing higher amounts of curse energy into the technique, it generates larger fields of attraction in return. The magnetic force is powerful powerful enough to tear apart entire buildings, a human body hit with the technique would be erased, but it can also be used to attract two targets to another, causing them to collide from wide distances. Hollow Purple By combining both red and blue curse techniques, it creates a negative equation which removes whatever it touches, essentially erasing anything that comes into contact with it on an atomic level and space-time level. Now that we have established the context behind how these cursed techniques work, it gives us a better understanding on how Gojo fights, from warping his opponent's bodies, manipulating distance of his opponents, and the ability to teleport to places and levitate in midair. Now let's talk about Gojo's domain expansion, called Unlimited Void. Unlimited Void floods the opponent's brain with limitless information, making them feel everything and see everything. Because their brain is being flooded with endless information, the opponent is completely immobilized and helpless. There's another thing I want to bring up folks, it's a thing in the verse called Reverse Curse Energy. Reverse Curse Energy is used in order to heal the user of injuries that they sustain in combat. Now the use of Reverse Curse Energy also depends on the user. In Gojo's case, he can use his Reverse Curse Energy to preserve his energy and keep his brain fresh, essentially giving him some type of form of self-sustenance and stamina recovery. Gojo has shown out of everyone to use his reverse cursed energy to rejuvenate his burnt out cursed energy, allowing him to reactivate his domain expansion. Now there's context to this folks, when a Jujutsu Sorcerer performs a domain expansion and after the domain expansion has finished, essentially it is described as their cursed energy being burnt out or overheated. For example, if you was to use a turret and you was to fire multiple bullets, the turret would eventually overheat. Now the turret isn't necessarily broken, it just needs time to recover. It still has bullets, it still works just fine, it just needs to cool down. In Gojo's case, he can use his reverse curse energy to bypass this by cooling it down faster, hence allowing him to reactivate his domain expansion with no problems. When Unlimited Void is active, it affects everything except Gojo, who is the user of the domain expansion. Gojo can also use other techniques, such as the Falling Blossom Emotion, which is a secret art technique passed down in the Big Three Sorcerer family. Unlike Simple Domain, which the user manifests their own domain to nullify a domain expansion's auto-hit attack, Falling Blossom Emotion shrouds the user in cursed energy that counteracts a moment a domain's guaranteed hit makes contact. The cursed energy defends the user automatically, countering any attack with equal force to nullify it. And Warak Kakashi, at this point in time, performs a feat where he uses his dual Mangekio Sharingan in order to speed blitz and tag Kaguya. This is very impressive because Kaguya also destroyed a pocket dimension containing moons, planets, and a star, which was all stated in this guidebook, and Kakashi himself was able to 
to damage this very same Kaguya. This would place Kakashi in the solar system tiers of AP, but if you use the calc from Versus Battle Wiki, which calcs the requirements to destroy something similar, this would place Kakashi in the 16.88 XFO, aka Multi Solar System, which is remarkable scaling for Kakashi. Now moving on to speed, a 16 year old Kakashi has his own direct speed feat where he's able to slice a lightning bolt while fatigued. Now the speed of a downstroke of lightning is Mach 1249, which is massively hypersonic. There is also a direct speed feat for Kakashi who was able to react and counteract Itachi's water jutsu which moves at light speeds which was calced around the 2.5 times the speed of light aka FTL. Kakashi would also scale to FTL feats such as the feat that was performed by Naruto who was able to react to Madara's light fang. There are many calcs for this feat but more often than not this feat was calced in the FTL ranges of speeds. Now that I've talked about stats Let's talk about some of Kakashi's hacks and abilities. Kakashi is iconically known as the copy ninja due to Kakashi possessing the Sharingan. Kakashi then later on goes to possess the dual Mangekyo Sharingan and Kakashi has also gained this reputation due to him copying over a thousand different techniques. Thanks to the possession of the Sharingan, Kakashi has a variety of jutsus and inherent abilities at his disposal. Kakashi's bread and butter abilities that he likes to use more often not in character is his Raikiri. He can also perform the Rasengan and he can also create shadow clones, use fire style fireball jutsu, he can also use substitute jutsus and water clones. His Sharingan eye copies the technique of opponents flawlessly as Kakashi executes the ability with such efficiency. Efficiency. Let's talk about the Sharingan. The Sharingan is the Dojutsu Keke Genkai of the Uchiha clan that appears selectively amongst its members. Those who wield such eyes are able to perform many feats and abilities with the Sharingan. The user is able to copy almost any jutsu they see, memorizing ninjutsu, genjutsu, and taijutsu with near perfect accuracy, such as the time. Sasuke copied one of Lee's techniques and the time Kakashi copied Sabuza's water dragon missile. It also lets the user see the flow of chakra. The Sharingan also grants the user precognition, allowing them to read the muscle movements of the opponent and their flow of chakra to stay steps ahead of them. With the dual Mongekyo Sharingan, it grants Kakashi a powerful ability called the Kamui. The Kamui is a space-time ninjutsu that can be a far objects or people inside the Kamui dimension. The Kamui works by the user placing a spiraling void on the area of the target and can also use this to either be a father target or warm or rip them apart on a spatial level. And Kakashi himself can also make himself intangible if need be. Kakashi also gains his own perfect Susano with his own offensive abilities such as the Kamui Shurikens. Now that's gonna pretty much wrap up Kakashi. I'm gonna go ahead and give my thoughts on who I think wins more often not in a cross first situation. So in terms of stats, AP and speed, I gotta award those to Kakashi. Kakashi is just way too strong and way too fast in part two. War Art Kakashi is just built to different solar system to multi solar system levels of AP and FTL reaction speeds. Very impressive in comparison to Gojo's own feats. Gojo just pales in comparison. Even if we try and use higher end feats, such as the planetary and large planetary AP, it's not enough. And I've heard some FTL arguments for JJK. However, they're not very solid. They're not very concrete. And I tend to stick with the more consistent showings of speeds so the lightning timer aspect just gojo's just way too slow so what about hacks and abilities and the biggest question and the biggest elephant in the room can kakashi bypass limitless can he get past infinity so if this was part one kakashi without the mongekyo sharingan without the draw mongekyo sharingan without the kamui he's gonna get stomped honestly if it was part one kakashi all of kakashi's attacks are very conventional they wouldn't be able to bypass limitless they move at a finite range and a finite distance so they wouldn't be able to get past infinity but there is one thing that actually can get past infinity and that's the kamui the kamui is very weird it doesn't really have a distance or a travel it just kind of appears on the opponent so the kamui is probably the best wink on for kakashi because if he places that kamui on any part 
on Gojo's body. Gojo is done for. Gojo gets BFR'd, all literally just shredded up into pieces. He just get ripped apart on a spatial level and he's not going to be able to come back from that, especially if it's just happening so fast because we know Kakashi can spam Kamui multiple times. So even if you make the argument about reverse curse technique, what about, you know, the healing properties of it? What Why doesn't just Gojo just use reverse curse technique and just heal himself? Well, it's not going to be enough, especially if Kakashi is going to spam the Kamui to such a degree, especially if he goes for the head, that's GG, uh, Gojo's done for. Now, what about the arguments for, like, what about Genjutsu, what about things of that nature? Now, unfortunately, for Kakashi, Gojo does not have a chakra network, so Kakashi won't be able to use his mind hacks in the same sense as he would in the Naruto verse, so he'd have to rely on ejecting chakra from his eyes in order to make it travel into the opponent's eyes so it can enter inside their bodies so the mind hacks can take effect. However, the chakra is physical, spiritual and mental in Naruto and if it has to physically apply to the opponent and if it touches that barrier because chakra is conventional as, as well, I really don't see the chakra getting through the barrier, the chakra would just dissipate and halt due to how limitless works. So I really don't see mind hacks being a very good wink on just due to the barrier and just due to the weird like, you know, how the verses work and Gojo not having a chakra uh, network and how Genjutsu works in Naruto and, and how the Uchihas when it comes to their ocular prowess, how they need to inject chakra into their opponents. If it's not going to get through the barrier, it's not going to affect Gojo. Gojo actually does have some mind resistances, but I don't think it's going to matter due to the layers of the Sharingan. So if that was to hit Gojo, he would be done for, but I really don't see that happening more often than not. I think the Kamui is the best wink on for Kakashi, and I think it's gonna get the job done. What if Gojo got off the domain expansion? Would Kakashi be able to resist its effects and the infinite information? Well, I think so. Let's talk about some things. So there was the point in time back previously in Naruto where Itachi used the Tsukuyomi on Kakashi and gave Kakashi three days worth of pain and information. Itachi is very capable of making you live out your entire life within an instant and also he can make you die instantly. So DMS Kakashi would easily be able to resist this and I'll explain why he'd be able to resist Limitless. So DMS Kakashi at this point in the series would scale above Itachi's ocular abilities. Itachi himself can generate an infinite amount of information and tolerate it himself using his Magekio Sharingan. So right there and there we have some really good statements. This came from I believe the light novel i might be wrong but the statements are on the screen for you guys to see so this is a very very crucial piece of information and a very good argument to make for kakashi especially dms kakashi to resist to resist the infinity so i think he'd be able to resist it just fine he'd be able to perceive and handle that level of information and he'd still proceed to body slam gojo however if we're including earlier versions of Kakashi before he even had the Mangekyo Sharingan or the Jewel Mangekyo Sharingan. We're talking just like part one Kakashi. No, he's done for. You know, three days worth of pain and information is completely fodder. It's like finite in comparison to what Gojo is doing. Gojo is doing something way substantial, infinite information in comparison to just some measly finite three days worth of pain and information. That's not a strong enough of a resistance and Kakashi would get smoked but regardless if we're talking about DMS Kakashi which I'm using in this video I'd say Kakashi wins no difficulty he'd speed blitz he'd spam Kamui and Gojo would be out for the taking he'd be done and even if we make the argument you know what about in character arguments what if Kakashi tries to use like other abilities Kakashi's very smart he has a higher IQ level than Shikamaru and he'd be able to uh, understand and decipher and deduce how the barrier works and how it's working and what certain things he shouldn't do. So he'd quickly come to a conclusion that he should use Kamui right off the bat and he'd try and dispatch of Gojo as quick as possible. But anyway, I gotta give victory to Kakashi more often than not. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe for further content. It's been real. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.